Hello and welcome. My name is Kesha Palm and I'm the artistic producer of the Paprika Theater Festival. And my name is Julia Dixon and I am the general manager of the festival. The play excerpt that you were about to experience was developed and presented at the Paprika Theater Festival. Paprika is a youth-led, award-winning performing arts company offering paid hands-on professional development opportunities to emerging artists, 18 to 30, in the greater Toronto area. Today and for over 23 years, Paprika operates from offices, theaters, coffee shops, houses, apartments, bedrooms, and kitchen tables all across Digerundo. We acknowledge the ancestral lands and waterways of the Anishinaabe, including the treaty holders of this territory, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee peoples from the Six Nations Confederacy of the Grand River, Wendat, and any other nations who cared for the land, acknowledged and unacknowledged, recorded and unrecorded, past, present, and future. Much of Paprika's programming and operations also takes place online. And even now, we are using equipment and high-speed internet not available in many rural and Indigenous communities in order to reach you through this digital presentation. We recognize that the technologies and devices bringing us together while physically apart hold precious materials that come from these lands and have significant carbon footprints that contribute to the changing climates disproportionately affecting Indigenous peoples worldwide. We continue to learn, unlearn, shift perspectives, embody and practice teachings of this land, including the Dish with Once Bloom Wampum Covenant, a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land, and the Seventh Generation Principle, a Haudenosaunee teaching that decisions that teaches the decisions that we make today should protect and safeguard the land and water for seven generations to come. We are so grateful to call this land home. Please enjoy the Paprika Festival Playwrights Unit staged readings, where we celebrate works in process by Dean Vukovic, Willow Martin, and Teja Shane Chung, developed with support from facilitator Bilal Bag from November 2022 to May 2023. The recordings made on May 21st, 2023 at Native Earth Performing Arts Aki Studio in Dugarondo, with equipment provided in kind from Charles Street Video and Theatre Pass Marai, and featuring lighting design by Paprika Design Lab participant Max Cameron Fearon. Yay. Yay! This presentation would not be possible without our lead lab and digital presentation partner at the Stratford Festival, the partners we just listed, and the community of donors and partners and staff who keep Paprika running. If you would like to join the community of supporters who make this work possible, you can become a monthly donor or make a one-time donation following the link below or by heading to our website, paprikafestival.com support. Now get comfortable. Settle in and please enjoy. Hi there, I'm Dean Vukovic. I'm a part of the Paprika Festival's 2023 Playwrights Unit, and my play is called Mold House. It's about a young trans man early in his transition who is decaying and self destructing in a mold and bug infested apartment when he has a hallucination or an apparition of a woman that sort of reminds him of his younger self, and the two of them investigate and attempt to understand each other in a very messy way. And the play as a content note features descriptions of gender dysphoria, emotional and physical intimacy, coarse language, and violent imagery. So please be advised. Um, but yeah, thank you. This is my play, Mold House. An almost man stands in a room. He's in a cold sweat. Oh, he's in a cold sweat. <laughs> Catching his breath, yellowed residential light, the walls are cracked and peeling, the window is open. A song plays softly from a CD player in the corner, soundscape, unintelligible voices, trying to say a word, cars passing by, faint sirens, creaking of floorboards above. They are bugs in my apartment, and I keep seeing this girl in the hallway. She looks like me, and she's rotting. She's wearing my clothes, and she's looking at me like she's sorry. And, and her eyes are gutted out. She's saying something I remember, but I can't figure out what. And I'm picking out the ends of verbs and phrases from my cupboard while I look for roaches. I'm on the brink of becoming a man. Which is to say, 
I'm on the brink of drawing blood. The truth is, I don't know much about manhood. What I know is what I've picked up off the ground and nurtured quietly, without remorse. I have taped down, bound myself up, and drawn on mustaches, and stuffed my boxers, and tried to speak with less women in my throat, and drowned in fabric of passed down, wrinkled, cuffed, and collared shirts. I'm about to hit concrete, and everyone can see it. Mold breaks down matter. It's a group of, of seed-like vegetative filaments of mycelium that spread when there's moisture in the environment and organic material to deface. This can be done through air, in soil, on food, or on animals. Go back. It's an evening on the east side. It's picking all the wrong clothes. It's having no cash in my wallet. It's trying to keep up with a girl making references to movies I I've never seen. But she likes my smile, and I like her perfume, so we go to her house with steep stairs. And she turns on all of her lamps. I think she feels lost like this. <laughs> and I've come all this way, and she's touching me like in the movies, and I'm thinking, kill me. Just kill me. Strike me with lightning or, or ram a pull into me. Coax a butcher into taking his cleaver to my arm. Two hours pass, and I'm sweaty and tired and hungry and wondering if I should buy novelty glassware. <laughs> <laughs> Bad at being a whore. <laughs> Too lovesick to kiss like I mean it. He winces. In your first apartment, all the lights are out, and I will not know your landlord's name. I will not know which of your floorboards creak, and I'm told the hospital will help me. I've been told and told. I talk out of my elbows, rough and calloused. My mother aims to smoothen out what I cannot reach anymore. They're telling me I have to go, and I have too many speeches left. You, you know the story. Do you remember? The story where I'm, I'm rotting? Of course it is. <laughs> it couldn't be anything else. And it's grown all over my body. And the sensible thing to do, the, the well-adjusted thing to do, is to remove it, like a tumor. You, you have to cut away the mold. But there just aren't enough doctors and, and too long of wait times. So I go to work and I sleep in my bed, staining it with mold. There's only so many times I can do the laundry, only so many showers I can take, and now it's growing under my skin. Now, I think I could have been a beautiful woman. Probably a good mother, too. I wasn't a perfect daughter, but I was all right. I was kind. Good. I used to be a teenage girl. I used to have the whole world in my hands. I, I didn't know anything except for how to miss someone and how to lie. I remember all the cars I was in, all the traffic lights, all of the moments in silence, all the, girl, the girls I clung to, all of the love I spoke of with a shaky voice. I remember stretching my arms out wide, feeling my rib cage expand before sinking back into myself, the panic settling in. My gums are receding. Come look. <laughs> Come. <laughs> Spit the way you used to launch cherry pits. Feel my tooth decay against your fingers. Take the wrong train home. Change into your inside clothes. I'll, I'll start boiling the water. I think. I miss the softness. I miss the part 
just before it got unbearable. I didn't know this is who I'd become. If I did, I would have prepared better. I would have fought harder. But I, I was young and starving and stupid, and I, I wanted the fear. I was angry, restless, trying to survive in spite of myself, which is to say, I was already a father's son. But I was also deathly afraid and bitter and gave myself to everybody else, so I was also a daughter. And it was vicious, this empty pursuit to figure out who I'd be for the rest of my life. It's all so boring now. I don't know what to say. I keep reaching out for the ones I, I lost again and again in the dark. I was talking to her on the phone, just waiting for her to give it up and see me again, you know, disregard all of her promises to herself, all of her morals, in some awful way. I wanted to be craved the way that I was craving. I wanted to be something that could ruin someone, or maybe I wanted to be ruined. Whichever's funnier, whichever hurts less in the morning. A gurgling guttural is human like. So I'm, uh, sorry. So I'm calling, I'm calling her uh, for this one final time, and she tells me, almost like a secret, an admission of guilt. She says, uh, I, I wish I could have driven you home after. I would have thanked your anesthesiologist. I would have driven carefully. He pauses, his gaze taken by the girl who is unseen. Blood rushes to his face and it's hard to breathe. He takes off a layer and tries to regain his words. It's hard not to get bitter, to be so hungry and left so shallow, hollow, to have to put yourself on a spit roast to marinate and ache and burn having to say, this is something of what I am. Please believe me. I am not who I used to be. Like me anyway. And doing this over and over, watching people try to be polite about it. I make myself so small and simple, waiting for people to get it wrong. Not even knowing What's right? If a man loops in the kitchen where fluorescent light flickers, calls to a blink, to blood pumping through arterial veins, where the rolling edge of winter, an end, is nowhere, bringing only rent, deposits, and gangrene. Or something. I forgot that. It's in the corners, it's in the fridge, it's under the sink, it's on the ceiling. It's uh, green, uh, brown, blue and black. It, it forms in, in circles, creating a divine message. Perfect mathematics, sacred geometry. It talks to me sometimes, like a, a ringing in my ear. I'm chosen to speak to it. I'm drawn to it in ways I don't even know how to tell you about, and I can't stop it from spreading even if I wanted to. I, I can see it, smell it, even taste it if I allow myself to. This home is rotten, but I'm not leaving. I was walking on the street from a subway station a few months ago. Uh, past this evangelical church and the preacher or pastor or volunteer or villain <laughs> says hello ma'am or something you know lady something like that something small it doesn't matter and it was like I was shot and I almost fell onto the pavement and crawled home because what did I do it for I go to a men's barber shop in Kensington every three months. I wear the clothes I have to wear. I shower in the dark. I don't even smile in public. 
you know how fucking sad that is? I don't smile. I just let my gaze harden into clay, immovable across streets and sidewalks. I don't know what I'll look like in a year. I don't know where the bugs are coming from. I can't kill them fast enough. A pause. And so it is. The reconstruction of a figure in glass. Lovers dropped into subway carts, each nerve frozen, muscles contracted, ribs broken. You are here. Your skull is buzzing at dawn. I'm sick with the thought you'll come back. I'm sick with the thought you'll come back. I'm sick with the thought you'll come back. And when I see you on the streets, you wear that sort of perfectly. So if in the morning I'm still nothing, if I'm still fragile and open and weeping, then what? What if the soreness continues? How will I get to sleep? Who will take away my mirrors and put me in the softest clothes? Who can I hold while the television plays amongst the mold and the throb and the weariness of a final day? Noise slowly floods back in, sounds like a deep, gurgling, gritty, sustains itself. The girl enters. They share a long silence. He takes a step back, she takes one forward. He comes closer, she retreats, stands still. He turns his back and starts walking backwards towards her carefully. She does the same, and the two pass one another, catching a glimpse of each other's faces. Hold on. That's pathetic. I'm not pathetic. I'm not. Three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. No, y y you know, it wasn't, it actually wasn't like that. Three. That, it was better. Softer. Sweeter. And harder to keep a hold of. Five. Do you know what you need? Seven. I'm at least man enough to admit when I'm falling short. Nine. Who else can say that? Eleven. If there was nothing at the center, then it was nothing at all. Thirteen. And, and it can't have been nothing at all because there was something there. I, I wasn't just... I, I wasn't just... Three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. Please! Look at me. Do you think I'm pretty? Yes. You should know that. I know you don't. No. Go back. Do you think I'm pretty? Yes. You should know that. I know you don't. I, I know. I know you don't. I know you don't. I know you don't. Three, five, seven. Where have you been? I've been closing my eyes looking for something. Something inside me. Something like you. Maybe you were sleeping. I was tired and my ears were always ringing. I've been hearing your voice. What have I said? I couldn't understand it. Something about being here. Something about a sunburn. Something about a fork and a knife and a snaggly tooth. Did you like it? Something about living and dying. Something about dying. Right. Something about dying before you live. I never said that. You did. Something about dying, bent over in the street, dying without a final phone call. Something about a phone call. S something about being scared. How long have you been like this for? You said these things to me. You, you were just there, and you said them to me. You move like her. You have my eyes. Full of wishes that haven't come true yet. Hands still waiting to get broken and busted open. You're scaring me. Something about sacrifice, ritual, giving something up. You? Are you giving something up? I will be. And you're going to help me. I don't think I can. Glory. Bloody, bloody glory. What? Do something to me. What? Do something to me. Something evil. Will you hurt me in return? Can't promise I will. Can't promise.
from Salome. Piss poor offer. <laughs> Something's gonna bring me out. I gotta get clean. I'll keep you safe here. It'll just be us. He's silent. The girl stands back, looking at him. She takes a step. Well, can I? Don't ask. Be. Sit down. He does. Follow me. She reaches her fingers into her mouth and pulls her cheeks, stretching them, baring her teeth. He follows. She gets closer and kneels in front of him, still grinning mechanically. He watches her mirroring. mirroring. Their faces are inches apart. She stops, tips his chin as if she'll say something to him. Instead, she climbs into his lap slowly. He frees up his hands and holds her. His poor offer. A silence. He picks her up, places her on the chair. He tries to kill bugs. I've been waiting for so long. My joints are getting tired. My bones are heavy. I'm starting to think it's not working anymore, and I don't think it ever did. I light myself into a star and glow for the girls I've wanted to hold me. Get pretty in my poses, speak softly. I make up secrets. People I could have been if someone saw me sooner. I say them to the walls. It's been so long. I can't remember anything else, and I don't know what to do with all my tangled guts. Maybe I could have talked about it. Then I wouldn't have to be so afraid. I just never knew the words, and it was easier to sit down and bleed. It was easier to pick my teeth up off the floor. It was easier to be soft. I think you're more like me than anyone I've ever seen. Do you like that? Can't tell you. Tell me how I can make you like me. Hold on. I'm not your savior. You're not mine. I'm just trying to find peace. And tell me when you find it. You're a bit broken, aren't you? <laughs> not more than you. How can you tell? Your posture. So, what? Is this how you cope? You're fucked up, it feels good, so am I. Don't make me a villain. I'm trying to find my own peace too. Pause. I'm glad you're here. It's nice. It brings back a lot of... It's nice. <laughs> I do wish you picked a better time, though. I can look better. Clean up nicer. I've got clothes that make me look... I can look sharper. And most of all, I'm usually nicer. I've got thoughts about the world, about people. You don't get to see any of that. Yeah. I would have liked to see you in your favorite clothes, shiny. You would? Of course. I have a suit. Maybe you'll like that. A suit? A suit? I have two. One black and one in off-white. <laughs> for all occasions? Yes, for all occasions. First days? Sure. With friends? Some. Lovers? A few. Why only a few? It's not like it's not bad. <laughs> I just bite down too hard. I latch. I get sick with love. Filled me to the point of, uh... And then it's three months later, and I realize I wasn't only. I was deeply frightened. And I apologized too much. And I never knew how to love a person right, or at the right time. Maybe I thought I was being nice, but I wasn't. I don't know. I was always waking up thinking it'll be the last time I see them. It's like a child. But at least I was right in the end. So then I'm left with this endless Tuesday over and over in my apartment that's trying to kill me. Smelling them in my sheets and hearing them wash dishes that aren't even there. I lose what I had every night. I can't tell if they're losing too. I don't think they are. You're scared. Yeah. You're scared too. I wish I could have shown her what kind of man I could have been. What did you do the last time you saw? We danced. Slowly. Sweetly. What did it look like? What do you mean? Show me. I can't show you. 
what are you doing? Try. Every time I blink, I think you'll go away. You don't. So touch me. What? Putting his hands on her chest. Touch me. Like I won't go away. A couple of breaths hang in the air. They fumble around before getting into position. Music starts, played on a piano out of tune. The two of them dance in a waltz, moving in circles around the stage, first slowly and unassumingly, then throwing away caution. Light on stage floods through different areas of the apartment, revealing and concealing the girl. Their bodies get closer and closer until the girl kisses his neck. They slow into a two-step, rocking back and forth. She keeps him going. His mouth is open, catching the light. He slowly runs his hands up her back. They stumble while undoing buttons, sliding off fabric and more. With each new spot of skin he reveals, she's quick to touch. Wait, I'm sorry, did you? Don't ask. Wait, did you tell her? Yeah, she cried. She lost a lot, a lot of what she knew. Something sort of like you. Why would you say that? You're sick. She lost me? I'm not sick. You're sick. You don't get to say that. Did you leave me? You buried me. I waited for you. I've waited years to talk to you. I know. I was patient. All this time, I wondered what you looked like, all the things you'd become. I'm more of you than you think I am. Show me where. You've been so far away, I can't find you anymore. I'm sorry. Stop. I didn't take care of you. You didn't. I'm trying, though. All of this, what I am now, that's me trying. Just don't stop. I'll let you hurt me, just don't stop. She goes to hold his hand, he grabs her jaw firmly. I'm a broken little girl. You're not. Say it. Say that I am. I won't ask for much else. She takes a breath. You're a broken little girl. You're a little girl that everyone has left and will continue to leave until you rot. Good. You're a broken little girl that doesn't have the decency or dignity to take care of herself. Yes. You'll always be ripped in half. Yes. And aching. Yes. And the people who loved you will live beautiful lives without you. Dance with me. They weave through and behind set pieces where at once we find the boy emerging from them, dancing alone. He holds the shape of her as if they are still dancing. Stand still. He looks at a side table of his and starts gnawing on the furniture for an extended period of time. While gnawing loudly, he hugs it while ro rocking back and forth, gurgling noises, low humming. My love, my darling, my love, my love. He has a coughing fit, laying his face down. Noise gets louder, he wails into the floor. <laughs> can't fuck, can't cry, can't eat, can't sleep, can't. Can't, can't, can't. I'm a real man. I'm a real man. I'm a good man. I'm a good... Touch me. Touch me. I can... Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. I'll be good. I'll be good. I'll... He crawls across the apartment, ripping off mold. He devours it and swallows, and the rest he tries to insert into his body. Melodic humming in the voice of the girl. Something you would remember from childhood. He twitches once and then twice, still moving. Without relief, he destroys and keeps on destroying. A light bulb burns out blackout.